Hello, my name is Kane Peterson, instructor at New Tech University. In this presentation, we want to go through how to connect a TriCaster with VoIP solutions like Skype, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, or others. To make the solution work, we need to first download the NDI Tools software. Install the software on a separate computer. This computer does have to be running Windows 8 or Windows 10 for all of the applications to work correctly. Once installed, we will be using NDI Virtual Input to turn NDI into a signal that VoIP software can use, and then use NDI Scan Converter to take the output of your VoIP system and turn it back into NDI to go into your production. This solution can work with any of these model TriCasters. TriCaster TC1, 410 Plus, Mini, any of the TriCaster XD systems, or the NewTek VMC1. Over the next steps, we'll talk about the setup of all of the software, the configuration of the workflow, and then basic operation inside some major applications like Skype, Teams, and Zoom. To get the software we need for this workflow, open a web browser and go to ndi.tv. Once we're at this site, go to the NDI Tools link at the top of the page, and then scroll down and download NDI Tools for Windows. Install this software on a separate PC with Windows 8 or Windows 10 as the operating system. One other piece of software that you might need is VB Cable, and this software can be downloaded from vb-audio.com, then go to the audio apps and the download button right here will get you this software. VB Cable puts a virtual sound card inside your computer and some applications or some sound cards and some systems don't run very well for the kind of workflow we're trying to do. So by installing VB Cable, we can create this virtual sound card and direct both our VoIP application and NDI scan converter to use this as the connection between the, the two programs. This also has the added advantage that it will not play the audio out of the speakers if you happen to be running this workflow on a laptop. So if you had a laptop in the room, let's say that the production was going on in, and you didn't want to have the sound of the laptop turned on in order for everything to work, this allows you to create a silent connection between the two programs. Once you have these applications installed, we need to run the appropriate ones. Go to your Start menu and find the NDI Tools application. And in here, you will find both the Virtual Input Program and the Scan Converter program that we will need. Start up Scan Converter, and this will put a blue NDI icon by your clock. You can right-click on this, and there are some options you can choose. The first is to pick the appropriate audio source. Use System Audio to select the output of your sound card or select the cable output if you're going to be using the output of the VB cable software. Also under capture settings, you have choices to show the mouse pointer or also capture a region of interest. This could be useful if the VoIP software you're using doesn't happen to fill the entire screen. You can actually capture just the region of the screen that you're interested in. Finally, under the frame rate options, you can set the frame rate coming out of NDI scan converter to match that of your production. The other software we want to run is the virtual input software. So go find that in NDI tools again and start that up. This will put a yellow looking NDI icon by your clock. And in this software, you want to right click on it and then find the output of your production that you intend to send to the VoIP software. In my case, this is the VMC system and I'm going to be using Mix 4. Now that we have the software running on our laptop, Let's get these sources connected into our TriCaster and configured for our needs. The first thing I'm going to do is bring in the desktop of the laptop. So I'm going to bring that in on input two. I'm going to go under source and find the name of my laptop and choose the appropriate graphics card source. In this case, it's uh, monitor one. We also need to get our output set up correctly. In my case, I set up Mix 4 as my output. So under my gear for the output settings, I'm going to choose what channel of video I want to send back to my production. Let's say program in this case. But I also need to set up a special audio channel just for this connection. And in this case, we probably don't want to send the master audio back because what will happen is that any audio that comes into our production, including the VoIP audio, is just going to get reflected directly back 
to the remote caller. So I'm going to go and select one of my aux outputs instead. And we can use any one of the three, but I'm just going to use aux three. And now we can set up aux three for our needs. So the way to set up this special audio configuration is to create what is called a mix minus. And a mix minus is actually not that hard to set up when somebody shows you how to do it. All we need to do is go into the input that we have set up for our incoming remote caller. That's input two in my case. Click on the gear of the audio mixer, go to the routing tab, and then take the aux that we are going to be use, using, uh, aux three in my case, and just click clear. And this will remove that audio from that output. And at this point, the remote callers will be able to hear everything else from our production, but they will not hear themselves. Now we're ready to go back into our VoIP software and configure each application that we plan on using with the appropriate settings. So let's take a look at our first VoIP application and see how we'd set this one up to work. We're going to use Skype for desktop. It is important that the version of Skype desktop that you use is the one that you download from the Skype website, not the version you get off the Windows Store. That version will not be able to see the virtual input camera. Once you have the software running, uh, click on the uh, button here in the uh, settings, and there's an area here called video and audio, and this is where you can set up the appropriate sources. So under camera, make sure you have new tech NDI video selected, which I already do, and you can see that that camera is now, uh, my NDI source is now connected in as a source. And under audio, we want to change the microphone to be the line new tech NDI audio. That's going to be the audio mix coming from my TriCaster as well. And then speaker wise, if I'm just using the sound card of my system, I would uh, leave this on speakers. But again, if I'm using that VB cable software, I'm going to change this to the cable input and this will direct the output of Skype just into VB cable. And then I'd have to also make sure that NDI scan converter is using the VB cable software as well uh, to, to receive that. Now, one other thing I do want to show very quickly, and this is one advantage to using the Skype desktop client that the other VoIP applications we're looking at will not have, is that Skype for desktop does have integrated NDI support. So if you go to the calling section, then click on advanced, you'll see there's an option called allow NDI usage, and you can turn this on. Now, what happens is that when some when you initiate a call through the Skype desktop client, it will create a NDI feed for you of that caller. And the nice thing with this uh, case is that it is strictly video and audio of the caller. You don't have to worry about any on-screen uh, widgets or windows or pop-ups or any of the kind of stuff that might happen in some case with Skype. So if you'd rather use this as a way to do your return, uh, you can do that as well. But if not, the NDI scan converter method will also work. Microsoft Teams is also another popular VoIP application, and you can make it work with this program as well. To configure that, go into the Teams settings, and in the window that uh, appears, go to Devices, Make sure PC, mic, and speakers is selected so that it will configure hardware from your computer to use. Then under the microphone, you're going to choose line new tech NDI audio that will feed the audio from your TriCaster in. And under the camera to pick new tech NDI video, and you can already see the video of my TriCaster coming in from NDI. Again, for the audio output back into your production, either leave it on speakers if you intend to use the sound card of your computer or set it to the VB cable input if you want to send it to the VB cable software to make your connection back to NDI scan converter. Let's take a look at GoToMeeting. For this software to operate, there is one important feature that must be set in NDI virtual input. Go to the NDI virtual input menu and under the video option, make sure it is set to 720p or 480p. The 1080p option for the webcam will not operate. If you don't have this video option, then go and download NDI tools again as this feature was added in early April. Once that option is set, we can go to our webcam and you'll see that ND New Tech NDI video shows up in the drop down list and we can get the video in. To set up your audio, Go to the drop down at the top of GoToMeeting, select Preferences, and in the window that appears, go to the Audio tab. Under Microphone, 
choose Line NewTek NDI Audio. And for your speaker setup, either choose Speakers if using the System Audio option in NDI Scan Converter, or choose Cable Input if using the VB Cable option inside NDI Scan Converter. Here we are in the Zoom video conferencing software. And to set this software up, click the gear in the upper right corner. And then under the video section, you can choose your NewTek NDI video as your webcam source. There are also some options in here as well that you might want to adjust like widescreen, enable HD, or whether, you're not, whether you want the mirrored video or not. Under the audio, you can set up your audio sources. So under microphone, you're going to choose the line NewTek NDI audio to get the audio from your production. And for the output or the speaker, again, you can either send it to your sound card or send it to the VB cable software if you want to use that method for your audio return. I hope you found this training video useful and I want to thank you for watching.